Welcome everyone. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome to Facebook Live. It is the 16th of October, year 2024. Um, it has started to be fall weather around here, so it's getting a bit cooler in Texas. I'm sure it's getting cooler everywhere else. Let me welcome our uh, panel today. We have Patricia, who's part of our core group of meditators. Good evening, Patricia. Thank you for joining. And then we have Lakshmi here, who is um, one of our session leaders when, whenever we host workshops. Um, I mean, this year has been really busy work-wise for me, so we have not hosted any, any of the workshops, but she has been a session leader in the workshops, um, in uh, mostly doing mantra chanting. So she does have, uh, we were just discussing right before this um, Facebook Live started that uh, Lakshmi actually hosts a weekly chanting session. So if anybody's interested, uh, please contact her. And then Sri Lakshmi has joined us online. So good evening, Sri Lakshmi as well. So uh, actually, uh, Patricia will be surprised. Um, right before this Facebook Live, Patricia was talking about that she's been watching uh, Rewired. And the section that fascinates her is about um, Dr. Joe talking about how we downregulate our genes towards disease. If you are li living, so his uh, statement is if you are living by the hormones of stress, like by living from the energy centers of one, two, and three, then we are downregulating our genes. And um, his whole uh, philosophy or his teaching is we need to upregulate our genes, right? We have to constantly be in these. Um, elevated emotions of uh, like gratitude, humility, empowered, nobility. I, I, I remember when um, like he has a, when you attend his retreats, he has a walking meditation, uh, the, the meditation body electric, which is a lying down meditation during the retreat it is only available on the retreats. It's not available online. Uh, there's a walking meditation corresponding to the lying down meditation. And in there, like he makes a stand. And when you open your eyes, he says, who's looking through those eyes? Nobility, grace. And the moment he said, and the way he says, who's looking through, the, through those eyes? It like got seared into my cell, the nob nobility or knowing of nobility got seared into me, like at a cellular level. And I've attended a couple of his retreats, so it's always like reinforced. So this, uh, uh, in this particular Facebook Live Q&A, I had decided to actually do what this book, Gene Keys, talks about, right? So supposedly what Richard Rudd, the teacher of Gene Keys says, when we open the book randomly at any page, whatever is being read, it's just like the Oracle, like uh, I think Kelly, um, she does um, cards, like Oracle cards, right? When, whenever we attend her workshops, Lakshmi, she opens her card and she says, um, this card is for the whole, this thing, right? So whatever gene key, like I'm gonna open a page, we're gonna discuss this. So he says that there are 64 gene keys, right? And his concept is every gene has a shadow to it. Every gene has a, a gift to it. And then there's a repressive quality. And then there's a siddhi, which is like, there's a higher uh, level to it. So let me open the book. I don't know. So let's see. The gene key is the 30th gene key. I don't know if y'all can see it. It's what what is it called? 30th gene key. 30th. Ah, okay. I thought it was actually, yeah. And the gene key. So uh Lakshmi, if you want to talk about this, and I'll 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 just uh read a few lines. 
the Teriye Chinki, it's the celestial fire. The programming partner is 29 Jinki, code on ring, the ring of purification. Physiology is the solar plexus, digestion. Amino acid that we produce because of the 30th gene key is glutamine. The shadow is desire. Remember we talked about desire in uh, the power of now? So um, he says, uh, the real purpose of desire is to get human beings to make mistakes so that we can evolve. Let us clarify the statement, desire does not serve the individual, but it does teach us something valuable at a collective level. The real hunger coming from the 30th shadow is the hunger for experience itself. In order for human beings to master their environment, they have to taste all aspects of it, which means that they also have to explore the darker side of experience as well as the lighter. The fact that individuals or even large populations are killed in the process is of no consequence to the awareness operating through the whole human gene pool. I'm not gonna read the whole thing. Uh, repressive nature is over seriousness. When desire is repressed, life force is also repressed. And this leads to a stiffening of one's whole being, physically, emotionally, and psychologically. We begin to take life very seriously. As we have seen, desire equates to fire and passion. When it isn't allowed to burn within us, our inner fire fizzles out. Many people deal with their desires in this way, particularly in repressive societies and religions. The reactive nature is to be flippant. These people in the world who indulge their desires without care always run the very real risk of being ostracized by society. And uh, so what's the, the, good, the good gift part? the gift is the gift of lightness. The good part is is there's a gift of lightness. The gift of lightness does not make your immune you immune to desire, but neither does it cause you to react to desire. It allows you to become your desires in all their mystery. This is a gift that knows desires do not necessarily have to be followed, but they have to be felt. Sometimes they do have to be followed in order that something is learned, but generally what this gift knows is that fulfillment of desire is a sham. <laughs> and, and the Siddhi, this is the most beautiful part, the Siddhi or the higher nature of desire is rapture and rapture is devotion. So the 30th Siddhi is an unusual Siddhi in that it manifests as one of the great divine ecstatic states. Along with its programming pa partner, the 29th Siddhi, there are aspects of our genetics that really terrify the majority of human beings. In our Western culture in particular, these kinds of ecstatic states are deeply distrusted as we no longer have any clear cultural bent for them. So, and um, here he says on the 38th Siddhi rapture, he says from Bhakti to Shakti, Lakshmi, if you want to speak about it. So you got the shadow, the repressive nature of desire. And so we're going to talk about desire. What, hope... before, we, before Lakshmi just talk, what's the 29th though? Because like twice you read that it's a partner of it. What's the 29th? 29th was not meant to be read today. We are oh, reading the 30th. Sorry. Yeah. So first of all, it is very, very interesting. Uh, the first sentence you started reading about the, the, the 30th, uh, and I knew that it was something to do with the solar plexus chakra. And um, so the desire is, um, is what, um, you know, comes from the reptilian brain that we all have, the the triune brain has um, three parts, right? The reptilian and the limbic system and the evolved, most evolved prefrontal cortex. So uh, reptilian is all to do with the survival and, and the desire. So um, the more and more you recognize the desires, 
um, then then your solar plexus chakra will become lighter and lighter because you didn't know any better. So you fill your life with all these desires. And it's like last time we um, discussed in um, uh, Power of Now that it's not that you want something to to you want to have something you just want it for that's all that's all your purpose is that's all the purpose of desire is so um even you know when when they sell cars um, advertisements in the in, if you have ever seen these car advertisements in the tv they never show just a car they always show a girl dressed in very skimpy outfits right next to the car because desire is what makes the person think okay now i want that car so um so it's it's very reptilian and then it's it's very interesting that um, um the amino acid that is responsible is glutamine i'm going to look more into that and uh, yeah so the more and more we start working on the desire not to let go of it completely but just to follow it Every time we have the desire, just to follow that desire. And then it's also, you know, the, the mantra that I taught, Aham Sakshi, that is, you are the witness. So you are witnessing each and every emotion that you are going through, including the emotion of wanting something, desire to have something. So just become a Sakshi to, or a witness to all that, is running in your mind and then uh, um, I'm sure you will be in that rapture. I have felt it many times in the sense that I connect to the, that divinity within me and I cannot stop those tears of joy from um, from not flowing because um, I, I have connected to some things that is so pristine and so beautiful inside that no words can describe it. So uh, the more and more you work on yourself, I am sure you will also gain this city. So um, I, I don't know what 29th key is, but maybe it has something to do with the, even the Swadhisthana Chakra that is right uh, below um, uh, solar plexus, that is the sacred chakra. So um, yeah, that, those are my two cents. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Lakshmi. And and like you were saying about the always grateful for all the beautiful insights that come through you. Incredibly amazing. Um, eternally grateful for it. Um, so when you were talking about the cars and uh, the beautiful women, so the desire is um, like, so this is a societal, um, what Eckhart would call the condition pattern of the past. Um, everybody associates cars with men, right? So they're trying to make the car more desirable through putting the pretty women right. uh, around the car, right? In yes. skippy dresses. So yes, they the desire more is not for the car, but the women. Yeah, they end yeah. up going and buying the car just because yeah. they were. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that's all to do with your reptilian brain. And the minute you start recognizing and become aware, then your prefrontal cortex of the brain becomes more and more because now you are aware of all these desires, right? So, right. so then the reptilian brain will not have as much power as it used to have over you. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's why uh, it is so important that uh, what Eckhart calls developing this presence power. Like even to enable the prefrontal cortex is to have like a higher degree of self-awareness, self-awareness of what my thoughts are, self-awareness of what is going on subconsciously within me. True. Right? True. Not just True. Uh, well, what is happening in our... Uh, we can see what is happening in the 3D world, but to be aware of how the 3D world is actually um, being processed in our mind, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? What are the interpretations and perceptions that we are carrying? Yeah, to absolutely. Be witness, witness that witnessing. Yeah, like when you said, Aham Sakshi, 
the witnessing faculty is there and you're observing yeah. your reactions. Yeah. Right? So beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lakshmi. Patricia, did you have a question about it? So a rapture, the one more thing before you start speaking, Patricia. Um, so one day Sri Lakshmi was bringing up, um, like in India, they always say that they are um, um, different paths to enlightenment. One is Bhakti Yoga, one is Raj Yoga, one is uh, uh, Jnana Yoga, right? And Bhakti, you know, when he says Bhakti to Shakti, that bhakti, yeah, we say it's bhakti yoga, but what I what I feel is day to day people actually don't have that level of rapture and devotion that you were talking about, Lakshmi. You know where you said you had tears in your eyes. They go through the motion like we just um, celebrated a huge festival, Dasera, or we may have just celebrated a few weeks before that. It was the Ganesh festival where everybody uh, immerses, like prays to Ganesh and Lord Ganesh and then immerses the idol and all that, right? But I feel they're going through the motions of being ritualistic and doing the rituals, but they are not to that level of degree of presence that you're talking about where you're in rapture. Correct. Like the Mira, the example of it would be uh, Mirabai in right. India, right? right. She right. was in rapture with for her love for Lord Krishna. Like she was yeah. so into the devotion and rapture that she had in that, right? So that rapturous attention yeah. is what we are talking about. The, yeah. the Siddhi to this 30th gene key would be to be in rapture or in total devotion. Yeah. So go ahead, Patricia, now that you heard all this from us. Is it? What Joel Dispenza talks about saying we are to be in love with life, or that's a different level. Because I would like you, if you could talk a little bit more about um, the book, I mean, the book itself. What is the, I mean, the significance of knowing all these gene keys? And this is what we can actually regulate upregulate we can like but how right how i mean with the desire like you read that it's to be felt because we are here to go through this but to realize that no matter how much you fulfill any desire that's a sham this this is that's that's fascinating because I feel that humans are driven by desires, right? The action, well, that's why I think it's with Solar Do you Christ remember, do you remember, to, do you to, remember the I, example that uh, Russian showed with the mastic? Mm -hmm. If you want to explain it to everyone, what he did. So yes, he had a match little match box and the matches and he was talking about that uh like we, when we have desires and we being still um what is that cooled into the thinking mind and that's that not not conscious mind every time you someone rubs the match it's gonna light up so in the beginning, we just we just let it light up and we don't do about it. When we're more conscious, we kind of are able to right away notice that it's being lit. And at some point, we get to the point that no matter how much it's being rubbed, it will not lit because there's nothing in us that will, in a sense, trigger maybe, trigger the reaction. Is just we become like Lakshmi says, buttonless. We don't have buttons that people can or outside circumstances can press for us to um, react. So no trigger, no more triggers. No more triggers, right? So that that, but is that even 
I guess it's possible with the present moment awareness because yeah, you have desires, you observe them, but they don't do anything for you anymore. <laughs> yeah, kind of. All right, feeling them, but very aware that they're serving its purpose until they don't anymore. But so we do need all our chakras aligned. So if we stuck like, Punam said, in three bottom chakras, according to Dr. Joe, we deregulate the genes, but we still need the power of those chakras for the energy to this. They create a lot of energy from what I'm understanding from Dr. Joe, that that's why when that energy is stuck there, that's when we are in trouble. But if we let that energy flow through your heart and the throat all the way to the brain, that's when we are connected with oneness. We just become, right? So it's almost like we we are human. We have that human experience. So we, in a sense, in our journey, we need to uh, experience all those desires go through the motions just to discover that they absolutely don't do much unless we get to the state of that rapture, right? Devotion. And we need the energy from those bottom, especially from the third chakra, right? That's the chakra of action and confidence and integrity and conviction and action taking action to actually follow not just in theory but actually do something about being conscious so i think we are here like humans have that incredible ability of action of taking action right the conscious one so but i love the fact of it of being light lightness right more of a just playfulness and elevating to higher levels, the ability to do that. But glutamine, like you said, I wonder what that does. I mean, I think the magnesium that we're taking in form of supplements from uh, Vimergy that medical medium recommends, the magnesium is with Glutamine, is that correct? Glycinate. Glycinate. Glyc oh, that's not it? That's not the same thing? No, it's not the same thing. Yeah. Ah, okay, sorry. <laughs> so, yes, uh, I guess my question was to put them after everything I said to maybe um, what is the purpose of the book and knowing all these keys? That's the unlocking, right? That's the unlocking of our genes that Dr. Joe is talking about, uh, the upregulation of the genes. So it, it almost is like uh, we have to get to the point, like Eckhart says, right? We can play with the world of form, but live with the world of form with a certain amount of detachment, right? So it may be, um, so Eckhart is uh, so sweet in the Conscious Manifestation course. He says, um, he talks about uh, how he healed himself from his cancer diagnosis. Like he had an operation, but even in spite of the operation, he didn't have to go for chemo or radiation or um, uh, anything of that sort. He said he gave himself radiation through presence. But um, he was saying that he was almost ready to die. Like he, he said, how many more meals do I have to eat? How many more experience should I, do I need in my life? Right, I'm done. So he, he said he was in that spot where he said, I'm ready to let go of my body. But if my body stays, I'm okay with that too, so that I can serve more, do the spiritual work more. 
So I would say that he is at that level of rapture, that he's okay, right? He's okay. So we have to, what I feel is we have to look in within ourselves and see, um, do we have this uh, uh, feeling of, oh, I, I didn't I didn't do this, like, are we missing something, right? Like saying, oh, I, I didn't do enough of this, or I didn't do enough of uh, traveling, or I didn't do enough of uh, having relationships, or I didn't have, did do enough of, are all those desires, did we end all those desires? Or what the new generation has a term for it, they call it FOMO. FOMO is the fear, fear. of missing out. Yeah. Fear of missing out, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lakshmi. Yeah. Are we in that fear of missing out? Oh, no. I need to, how many more parties do we need to attend? How many more shoes do I need to buy? How many more um, outfits do I need to buy? Like, what is the desire, right? If there's a desire, then um, it'll be like, we'll do it out of necessity. Like I, I buy clothes because something is worn out and now it's looking old and I need to replace it, right? I need to look professional and uh, I can't keep wearing uh, worn out clothes to work. So I have to go replace it. Your, your right. desire towards like external things to satisfy certain desires, certain looks, certain accomplishments, now it's really turning into the, the dedication and rapture to your growth and practice spirituality, right? Right. Exactly. So the rapture is like, how, how many more, uh, like how much more deeper is my meditation and the equivalent, how much more can I give, like selflessly give, whether it is at work, with my efforts, helping my coworkers and everything. Like everything is very um, service oriented. Like, you know, they say servant leader, be a servant leader. It's more like a servant leader. How can I help at work? How can I help here, right? Like in the group, like a lot of people message me directly one-on-one -on -one, and then I help them out. Like I provide them with guidance and then it helps out. I, I think Sri Lakshmi was about to say something when I'm, I was talking about the bhakti part. Sri Lakshmi, were you going to say something? No, that is, I, I wanted, but let us drop. But I got one more doubt now. Now that he has spoken about sacred chakra and naval chakra, which deal with uh, water and fire elements, I was curious to know about the first chakra, root chakra, which deals with earth. Could you please elaborate on that, please? Uh, when you say first chakra, uh, what about the first chakra? Root chakra, earth elements, if there are blockages, how do you get over them? Earth chakra, if there are blockages, Yes. Like the, I only know one way, which is Dr. Joe's way, Sri Lakshmi. Activating yeah. the right. center. Also, right. also, Sri Lakshmi Auntie connecting to Mother Earth. Yes, uh, is is one way of healing your root chakra. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, you can um, you can even imagine that uh, there is a cord connecting from the root chakra going to the core of the Mother Earth, because. Okay. Earth is the one which is always guiding you. So mm -hmm. the more you are connected to Mother Earth, um, the more the root chakra will help you in the sense that um, fear is the main um, um, thing that blocks the root chakra. And of course, fear is the mother of all the negative emotions anyway. Whatever stems is because of the fear. So the more and more you are connected with the Mother Earth, with nature and everything in the nature, um, your Earth, uh, the, the root chakra will transform. Okay, thank you. That is what I wanted to know. Regarding yeah. the other point, uh, connection, no, I was only mentioning that unless you happen to have pure bhakti, you will not be able to travel correctly in the Gnan mark. That is all I was telling. Without bhakti, Gnan mark cannot be achieved. Completely. That is what I have been, uh, what you call, coming across in all the Upanishads. Bhakti is essential to 
have this gnanam in the right way, atma gnanam. That is what I was doing. Thank you. Rapture. To have that rapture, yes, you need to have that um, devotion. Complete yeah. surrender. Surrender. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. And to that level, I would say, Sri Lakshmi, that that uh, that level of bhakti implies that you have raised your vibrational, like you know, Mirabai is like yes. the example, right? You have raised your. Uh, so the same thing that we do through Dr. Joe's meditation, right? Raising yes. our vibrational energy, yes. we have to raise our vibrational energy to that level where we are rapturous in our day-to-day uh, -day activities, no matter what it is, right? We are sweeping or mopping, uh, whatever we may be doing, we are completely in, so mm -hmm. in love with life. Okay, okay, got it. Right, then, yeah. then you would say that uh, that person has that devotion, that level of the devotion that, I mean, each one, each thing, takes us to the same outcome, which is to raise our vibrational energy. But then you say bhakti yoga, right? To yes. have that level of rapture, you're paying total attention to one single pointedly, to one um, divine, uh, uh, one divine feeling, right? Okay. Feeling of the divine like what I would think that Mirabai was feeling, her divine connection to Lord Krishna, yes. right? But yes. I don't think like normal human beings are actually, when you say they're following bhakti, uh, uh, the path of bhakti, bhakti marg or bhakti are doing bhakti yoga, I think people are just going through the motions of doing the ritual. Like, you know, if they're doing, they're doing yeah. like Dasera celebration and they're doing Durga Puja or whatever they're doing, right? They do this nine day thing. A lot of people just go through the motion of doing it instead of actually getting into that rapturous state then of it presence. The karma yoga category. It will go into the karma yoga category if they are not having that devotion, dedication. No, karma yoga also has uh, its own rapture to it, right? It, even with karma yoga, you can be so attentive to your action. So, yes. Like Eckhart explains it, right? You can so selflessly offer your action up to divinity mm -hmm. that you are so present that you make this universe elevated and sublime in that moment. Yes. So even karma yoga can lead you to the same high elevated um, yes. vibrational energy. Uh. No, nothing is wrong, right? Each each one, and I feel that's what. Um, so one of the things that uh, Richard Rudd says is, all of this is written into our genes already at the memory level. Like the, you, you know, where do we have the elemental memory, the atomic memory and all that, right? We think it's in our brain. Like where is memory stored? We think it's in a brain, but what Richard Rudd says is everything is written at the energetic level in our genes. Okay. okay. Like that we were a mineral at some point in time, millions of years ago, we were just a particle or a gaseous state. Yes. Maybe when the Big Bang, uh, when the Big Bang okay. occurred, maybe we were just a gaseous state. We were not even a mineral. We, we were gas. Where is that memory written? Isn't it incredible? Yes. It's, it's mind boggling yeah. when we can think of it, that it is all written in our genes. Yes, definitely. The way now they say whatever we think that will be embedded in the cell. So that way, everything goes back to the root, either cell, cell form or the gene form. Exactly. Then it gets mm. written in the, 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 and then he also says that the communication outward, right? We may think, oh, the heart is beating. How are we communicating with the outside world? I think, uh, Patricia, you were talking about, uh, Kelly was talking about, the mitochondria having light, 
right? Actually, the thing that has light is the genes in the cell. And that they are the genes are the one that have that vibrational energy and they're electromagnetic. They they are keep keeping the like this communication with the outside world. You know, um, uh, Carolyn Mays kind of like uh, it reminded me of uh, the grid that Carolyn Mays uh, like the longitudes and latitudes. The grid that uh, Carolyn Mays draws, right? She she creates an um, Earth. And she puts us like a stick figure in the middle, and then she uh, draws lines, longitude and latitude that we are always connected to this grid. And what is connected to that grid is our genes. That connection is not like our heart, that electromagnetic frequency that we are giving off is our genes. So I think that's why Dr. Joe is saying upregulate your genes. And when you upregulate your genes, you actually uh, return to wholeness. You upregulate all them people, to wholeness. All people have that. How many genes, the key genes Q have in that book? Uh, he talks about 64. So we all have them? We all have 64 genes. Makes sense. I I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was like twenty three. No, what am I? Yes, that's but... chromosomes. That's uh, maybe I'm confused. He said sixty four genes or gene keys. He talks about, and it's based based on some Chinese book called I Ching. Um, it already is talked about in that book called I Ching, the sixty four genes. So some of it, like he references some of the Chinese material. Yeah, I think what he's talking about is the gene keys because we have many, many more genes than 64. So, but keys probably are just 64. And yeah, you are right about having 23 pairs of chromosomes. Um, but um, yeah, we have um, uh, more than 64 genes, but gene keys might be 64. Uh, yeah. He... Um... If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, uh, um, in the, the the series Rewired, Dr. Joe mentions about thousands of genes, and but there's like the protein right. that right. built yeah. it's in, in, in thousands, so yeah. it's yeah. more protein, the variations, like so each gene has multiple expressions. True, true, so, true. So true. it's fascinating. It is, it is, absolutely. We talk about more, more because this book is so thick. I can, for the next few Facebook lives, I can open up and we can talk about some more of these. Yeah, I would like that. But it's very, amazing. Very interesting. That, so what, uh, what is the significance that today you picked up the 30? How do you, how do you look at it? It's just completely random or it's something we needed to talk about, but why? Do we know why? <laughs> if some, somebody was enlightened by yeah. what, whatever conversation that we had, somebody was able to understand more about their desires. Yeah. Uh, so also, I also taught another mantra, which is Akartaham. I am not the doer. So uh, right now we need not think that Poonam was the doer. It, it She was guided to open that particular page. So we are not the doers. That guidance came to her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today we were supposed to discuss about this. Especially it was a nice uh, conversation because we discussed the exact same, around the same topic about right. desires in the power of now yes. discussion, yes. right? Yes. Page yes. 25, 24 or 25. Yes. where Eckhart talks about uh, the egoic wanting. What he says is um, egoic wanting is, uh, uh, like I, I almost see it like as, a, you know, gluttony is like a certain egoic wanting to get over mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. uh, uh, retail therapy, egoic yeah. wanting. Also right. also the need for validation and appreciation, the, the external need, the desire. You know, you you want all this uh, appreciation. That is why you go buy all these outfits or 
designer things and all that and whatever that you do there is you know you, you the bottom line is the desire right yeah. and i i remember go ahead patricia isn't that because like there are theories of different um authors that we as human beings have needs so there's phys physical needs there's emotional needs psychological needs you know there's like different levels so let's say there's need to be to belong so you need that from society they kind of and it's very important because i know that um but that might be the reptilian brain brain reacting that need for survival because years and generations back if you didn't have community or didn't belong to a group you could have died by yourself so being pushed away or not a, not uh, accepted by a group that was like threatening to your life um so i know that's that matters but there's there are needs like food obviously shelter <laughs> So this is our survival, but higher needs like uh, fulfillment or appreciation, like uh, maybe not acknowledging, but right? Is that, that's why we have desires because we have those as a humans, like the body has the needs, the, the mind has needs, right? Is that pairing? the needs to the desires because if we have needs we need to fulfill them so now we desire ways to fulfill them to make sure that the needs are being met no that would be the ego the thinking mind trying to justify the desire if he said we have some fu uh, fundamental needs because as uh, Eckhart quotes uh, Jesus he says uh, if God clothes flowers in such, I'm paraphrasing here, God clothes flowers in such beautiful ways, it's written in the Bible, right? How much more would it do for a human? Yeah. Right? Once the Our, more and more um, desire falls away, you realize that you are more and more in the stillness because there is no past that is um, bothering you anymore and there is no future that you are desiring anymore so you are rooted in that stillness so um all that is because of not having a desire leads to stillness and stillness ultimately leads to that rapture that um, that the 30th uh, gene key is uh, talking about so that's why that's why um some monks just go on not eating or eating very little because that that's not and it doesn't matter what they eat because it's just to honestly maintain bodies on a very minimum level because they don't need that much so when like when i mentioned gluttony so like overeating and filling yourself with different foods and desserts and stuff because you know for people that are enlightened Again, the, Patricia, need. you have to realize the desire not to be gluttonous is also a desire. Mm -hmm. So if as a monk... Well, what, if, what, what do you fulfill by it? Like, if you have desire not to... So what, what are you fulfilling? What's, what's the desire there? That you, you want to show people or you want to show the world that you don't have the desire to eat that much food. So as long as we are not operating from that point of view, that, oh, we didn't make a opinion or a thought formation in our mind saying, oh, this world is gluttonous. Just like, you remember, there was a story about that monk that don't touch women, Akito and the thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They pick up a woman. Monks are not supposed to touch women. Mm -hmm. That's because of the desire that may arise in them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. 
So if you were, you made that policy that uh, don't touch women or don't touch men, just because, oh man, if I touch a man, the desire. So just like uh, Russian was saying, right? Like he struck a matchstick and then he showed that the uh, matchstick was burning. That is the burning desire, right? But if a person, so you have to get to that level of presence that the presence in itself. So um, like, um, if you take Dr. Joe, right? What, what I see in him, or if you take Sadhguru, I'm not just saying Dr. Joe, what I see in them is they are so rapturous about the mission that they are on to transform the world that that in itself is gratifying. They are in so much uh, in love with life about their mission to transform human beings that there's no other, uh, I mean, the, the desires are no longer there. Like Sadhguru is not going, oh, I need to have a, a family or I, I need to have children or I need to have a wife that desire is not, not there, right? The same thing will happen with food. I'm, I'm sure they enjoy good food when, when the food is there, just like Eckhart says, right? We are here to experience things. And that's what even he uh, the book is saying, this desire is there to experience life. So if there's good food, yeah, let's enjoy the good food. If there are uh, really sweet organic vegetables, yeah, let me enjoy the organic vegetables, right? Why why shouldn't I bite into an organic uh, strawberry? Why should I go, oh, no, I, I should remove all my desires. And so I'm not going to buy this really uh, expensive uh, a strawberry or an expensive uh, buy the bag of wild blueberries because I don't have any desires. That would be crazy, right? So we are here to experience the world of form. Yeah, let's, as long as it is, I love Wyman's wild blueberries. I love the taste of them, right? I love my heavy metal detox, the taste of my heavy metal detox smoothie. I was thinking that's not, the same thing this morning. <laughs> that's not that's not a desire. That's that's like enjoying the world of foam. But when the heavy metal detox smoothie no longer exists, or for Dr. Joe, uh, maybe one of his events gets canceled, he'd go uh, spend more time into self care, self uh, meditation, take care of other things. Right? It's not like he's going to go. Oh my God, my world is uh, shattered apart, right? So that burning and that sacral chakra and that burning starts here, right? Like when you when you feel um, the desire for something, doesn't it start in the middle, like sacral chakra, third center? Yeah, and also they always talk about your uh, gut feeling, right? They, they exactly. Your gut feeling, so yeah. Your intuition also is from there. From here. Yeah. And uh, th that's what Dr. Joe is saying. Each one of our chakras has a brain of its own. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's what, when we are doing the blessings of the energy center, we are in enhancing or improving or bringing that brain into balance. The, uh, the whole reason we are out of balance is because we are living out of this uh, emotions of, the past, which is the anger, the frustration, the resentment, all the reactivity, the repressive nature, right? Yeah. And uh, what does he say? The repressive side to it is um, if he suppress it, then um, it's going to be, you can't even suppress it, right? What does he say? I, is that in some religious religious uh, you know organization like it has a it has a repressive nature that we can get overly serious when desire is repressed life force is also repressed so we are not in love with life we are repressing life 
people are too serious and dry and heavy and just yeah lost their mojo yeah yeah right yeah you got it so if anybody here is uh feeling over uh, life is so serious oh my god it's full of all these troubles so oh, oh my god um uh, it is so hard it, it is hard work to be a human being right we have to wake up we have to do instead of jumping out of bed uh, oh i'm in love with life uh, i'm in a state of gratitude uh right instead of bad if you go oh my god oh, i have to wake up again again i have to get into that car and i have to drive <laughs> playing it so well I did an uh, exercise at work with with uh, the technicians, and I said, "Well, tell me what you have to do in the morning." So they were starts like, "Oh, I have to get up. Oh, I have to brush my teeth. Oh, I have to prepare a bottle for my kid." Blah blah blah. And I said, "Well, do a simple thing. Change the word have to to get to. I get to brush my teeth. Wow, well, right? I'm like, oh, it means that I have to, <laughs> right? So." I mean, there's like, oh, I get to make a butterfly. I have a child and I get to, as a father, in the morning, you know, it's like all of a sudden something that weighs them so heavily in such a simple exercise, like, wow, I get to get up and go to work. It's like there is, you know, light to it. Exactly. Like like I'm positive Lakshmi is looking forward to like her Tuesday meetings. She was talking about her Tuesday chanting meeting. And then she, did she say Sunday she has a discussion, a uh, book discussion or uh, something of that sort? On Sunday. Sunday, Sunday? Uh, Sunday mornings, uh, um, 8.30 uh, Pacific time. That would be 11.30 Eastern time. So right now we are talking about Kabir Ke Dohe, uh, if you remember from childhood, mm -hmm. Punam. Mm -hmm. um, so we are discussing Kabir Ke Dohe. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. So, you know, she's going to be in love with life. Like, let me wake up and get ready for my um, uh, Sunday meeting or let me get, get ready. And we are so excited about, like, to me, my most exciting part is uh, Friday evening my group meditations hosting that and now that we are reading the power of now and a new earth it's all the more like i i look forward to those uh, sessions where all of you are reading and uh we have those we go paragraph line by line paragraph by paragraph and we read yeah, it was those a two quite books brilliant through. quite brilliant idea of yours but we're not gonna have this next two weeks right that's great because I have to work, I have to wake up early for work on Saturday morning. So I need to go to bed early. I need to go to bed like 8, 8.30. Hopefully I get to bed by 8, 8.30. So but when we would be doing the meditation, I should be in bed. So that's why I had to cancel it. And same thing in November, um, maybe 15th of November or whatever that, let me see. The It'll be the 15, 15th and 22nd of November. It would be the same that I have. Uh, You're but I can so dedicated to your uh to service to your work. That's that's incredible. Actually, the whole reason uh, more than uh, dedication, it's more like a selfless giving because my manager is out of the office so I have, I'm having to do her work normally she takes up on Friday evenings so I don't have to I can log off exactly when I need to log off but because she's out of the office then I have to that make sure that whatever we need to do on Fridays is done and whatever we need to do on Saturday is done instead of uh but hopefully uh, I'm trying to train other people. So maybe next year I'll get more and more weekends to myself and then I can resume the Sunday meetings as well. I'm yes. Gonna... I was wondering, yes, that people from Europe might be missing. Missing us. 
like I haven't seen Alice. I'm sure Alice is uh, I miss Alice. I miss Shuma. I miss Terry. So yeah. I think we are at the top of the hour. It's getting late for you, Patricia. So and it's getting late for Sri Lakshmi as well. Uh, tomorrow I think is a uh, full moon. So everybody watch out, uh, do more extra. So full moon is a day where people actually who have psychological issues actually have more psychological issues. So watch out for craziness tomorrow, Patricia, if it already has not started right now. And then on top of that, do more meditation because what Sadhguru says is if we align ourselves with the planet, like these planetary emotions, that's a day I think he says new moon and uh, full moon are days that if you do more meditation, it'll like elevate our uh, vibrational energy. But good to see you, Sri Lakshmi. Um, eternally thank grateful you. for all the insights and wisdom. And thank yeah. you so, so much. You. I'll see you all in two weeks for yeah. the Facebook Live. Thank you. Much thank love. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Many Bye. blessings. Bye. Much love. Thank you for choosing your divinity over your humanity and being here. Thank you. Bye. Bye.